first published in McClure's magazine in 1911, Miss Hinch, is a short story by the American writer Henry Sidner Harrison. While the story involves murder and mystery, it's not a typical whodunit yarn. The crime of passion and the woman who committed it are pressing topics of conversation among late-night subway occupants. As the story begins, Miss Hinch, the murderer, has escaped without a trace, eluding even the clever investigative journalist, Jesse Dark. After two of the travelers emerge from the train, clues start to suggest they're not who they appear to be, and a game of cat and mouse through the cold city streets ensues. On a dark winter night, a rotund, club-footed clergyman and a willowy old woman wearing a hat board a subway car in New York City. It's close to midnight, and the car is sparsely populated. A newspaper the clergyman carries quickly sparks conversation among the travelers about the murderer on everyone's mind, Miss Hinch. A celebrated actor, Miss Hinch is most admired as a master of disguise. So skilled is she at impersonations, she appeared to have no permanent form or fashion of her own, but to be only so much plastic human material out of which her cunning could mold man, woman, or child. Indeed, her only enduring individual feature is her distinctive, sharp chin. At this moment, Miss Hinch is a fugitive from the law. When her lover, John Catherwood, was found stabbed in her dressing room two weeks ago, authorities quickly pieced together the puzzle. Catherwood had informed Miss Hinch of his impending marriage to another woman, and, in a fit of jealous rage, she plunged her stage prop sword into him. Since that night, no one has seen her. The subway passengers form a small chorus of commentators on the crime. They speculate on whether the remarkable sleuthing talents of female journalist Jessie Dark can match the shapeshifting craftiness of Miss Hinch. Despite having single-handedly hunted down nine previously at-large criminals, most of them women, Jessie Dark, according to the newspaper headline, seems stumped by this case. The old woman on the subway train expresses her conviction that Miss Hinch will outweet her pursuers, while others in the car place their bets on Jessie Dark's prowess. The old woman, claiming to be a friend of Catherwood's mother, tells the clergyman she's just left the bereaved woman's home. Because he knows from newspaper accounts that Catherwood's mother lives far from the subway station where he and the old woman boarded the train, the clergyman realizes she's lying. The clergyman and the old woman both get off at the 14th Street stop to change trains. After waiting a while on the cold platform for the next train, they go together to ask the ticket chopper when it will arrive. Suddenly, the old woman nearly faints, explaining she missed her supper. They agree they have time for a quick meal at a restaurant before the train comes. When they finish eating, the old woman decides to order some tea, but they can't find the bill of fare, a small menu printed on a cardboard strip. The waiter provides another, and as the woman slowly sips her hot tea, the clergyman gets restless. He excuses himself to investigate the sound of newsboys calling on the street. Once outside, he sees a police officer several blocks away and starts to run toward him. Before he gets far, however, the restaurant's side door opens, and he collides with the old woman. Following mutual apologies and wary glances at one another, they agree to return to the subway. Meanwhile, back in the restaurant, the waiter finds the missing bill of fare between the seats. Scribbled on the back is a cryptic message that reads, Miss Hinch 14th Street Subway. Get police quick. There is some delay, as the restaurant owner wonders if this is a joke, but he finally calls the policeman in from the street. Just as the three men are dismissing the note as tomfoolery, the ticket chopper and two more officers arrive. Another such note, this one alleging Miss Hinch to be at a nearby restaurant, was left at the ticket chopper's box. When a third note turns up that once again places Miss Hinch at the subway stop, the cops dash towards 14th Street. The clergyman and the old woman return to the subway platform where they had stood half an hour earlier. As a low rumble signals an approaching train, the clergyman cautions the old woman to take care on the icy platform. They both keep looking nervously at the station entrance. The clergyman tries to hold the woman's attention with pleasant chatter while, in his pocket, he pricks his finger with a pin and presses it on his handkerchief. On the pretext of wiping the blood from a scratch on the old woman's face, the clergyman dabs at her cheek with the prepared handkerchief. He uncovers a smooth cheek where he had smudged the clever wrinkles away. The police clatter down the steps and onto the platform as the clergyman says, Miss Hinch, you are not so terribly clever, after all. 
With a surprised exclamation, the old woman slips on the ice, or perhaps trips on the club-footed clergyman's cane, and falls onto the tracks as the express train rushes by. The clergyman and police remove the unfortunate woman's body from the tracks, and, when the police question him about the three notes, the clergyman admits he wrote them. He recounts the evening's events, describing how, as he and the woman grew increasingly suspicious of one another, he tried to covertly direct authorities to Miss Hinch's whereabouts. Having done his part, the clergyman takes his leave. Before departing, however, he solemnly bends to retrieve the handkerchief that had fallen from the dead woman's breast. With this action, his beard snags on her hatpin and pulls off completely, revealing a sharp chin beneath. The police immediately sees the real Miss Hinch, and the next day's newspapers credit Jessie Dark and her hat pin with having posthumously secured the capture of Catherwood's elusive killer. Although his name is not widely recognized in the 21st century, Henry Sidner Harrison published numerous short stories and novels that were critically acclaimed in the early 20th century. A 1931 review in the Princeton Alumni Weekly observes that Harrison's Miss Hinch not only contains all the prescribed ingredients for modern thrillers, but also precedes all others. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.